In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I set up a brand new palette using a plastic palette with 20 different wells and a bunch of tubed watercolors. So watercolor in tubes. I have an assortment here of Winsor & Newton and Daniel Smith, and I will go through the colors and my process and why I chose the different colors and um, why I choose to organize them and lay them down in a specific way all in this video. First, let's talk about the colors that I chose. So if I'm going to create an everyday palette, basically a palette that I can pull out onto my desk every day and use for just about anything that I'm going to paint, I would choose this uh, 20 well little plastic foldable palette from that I picked up from Blick Art Materials because it's compact and it's small enough that it doesn't take up a ton of room, but it has these nice mixing palettes in addition to the wells where your paint is going to go. And I have found this to be a really handy palette, especially if you are trying to keep a budget because the, this uh, folding plastic palette I think is about $5. So I just for reference, I've been using the same exact palette using various colors for about a year. I think this has lasted me actually a little more than a year. I've had to fill up a few of the wells again, but some of the wells I haven't used uh, as often. So because of my experience with that old palette, I decided to make a new palette knowing which colors I reached for often, which colors I didn't use very often. And so this is like a new and improved set of colors that I would definitely recommend you have on hand. Uh, as you can see, I've ordered it in a rainbow order. So let's start with the bottom. First, I have my set of reds. Um, my set of reds and pinks really in this first uh, little section here are Opera Pink, Quinn Rose, and Permanent Red Deep. I think that having all of these variations of pink and red can uh, help me get uh, some excellent mixing options there. And then for my orange section, I have Scarlet Lake, which is like a red orange, and Windsor Orange, which is more of a light orange. Then toward the yellows, I have Yellow Ochre and Permanent Yellow Deep and Lemon Yellow. And then moving toward the green, I have Thalo Yellow Green and Hooker's Green. And these are the more yellow greens, which is why they're blending into the yellows over here. So I organize all of these colors in the Roy G. Biv order, which is, if you don't know, all of the colors in the rainbow. So Roy, uh, R-O-Y, red, orange, yellow, G for green, Biv, blue, indigo, violet. And so this first... Uh, this first half of my palette is are my reds, oranges, yellows, and half of my greens. Then we move up here, and uh, this is a more neutral side, but it's the other half of the rainbow. So I would say this has most of my bright colors, and these are more of my neutral colors. So I'm starting with Prussian green right here, which is kind of like a blue-green, um, but not quite as blue-green as Phthalo Turquoise right here, which is more um, a traditional blue-green, a really stunning turquoise color. And then we move on to the blues. So I have Prussian blue, which is probably my favorite everyday blue. Then indigo, which is a darker blue, and Payne's gray, which is like a navy blue. Uh, it probably has some black or gray pigments in there. And then Paraline violet is kind of like a maroon-ish color and ultramarine violet deep is um, a more traditional violet purple and then finally we have the classic neutrals lamp black and burnt umber which is brown and i actually switched the two so burnt umber is here these got mixed up a little bit perlene violets here and then i also like to have one well of white gouache even though gouache doesn't really if you want it to be opaque, um, 
I would use it while it's wet, but I like to have a dried well of white gouache in case I want to make a tint of any of the colors that I'm using. So you make a tint of a color by adding white to it, and that can make some fun like pastel colors with all of the colors in this palette. So those are all the colors I'm using, and now let's get down to how I place them in the palette. So if I'm starting with Opera Pink on my colorful red, orange, yellow sides, then I'm just gonna twist off the cap of my Opera Pink and I'm going to squeeze a glob of this pink right into the palette right here. And you can squeeze any amount that you want, um, but to make it last, I would make it a decent sized glob. So I'm squeezing a little bit of that Opera Pink into this palette, closing the cap. And then this is a trick that I learned um, this year while I've been experimenting with this method. I'm just gonna take the end of a paintbrush here and um, I'm gonna push the paint into the sides of the palette and just kind of flatten the paint on the outside. So I don't wanna waste much of the paint, which is why I'm just using a handle you can also use a brush if you want, um, like the bristles side, but I'm pushing the paint down to be a little more flat. And that's because when you're painting with watercolor, one of the most important qualities to maintain on your brushes is this point right here. When you have, um, when you can maintain the point on your paintbrush, then it lets you be more flexible with your paintbrush and you can make a lot of really fine details. And one way to maintain this point to preserve it as long as possible is to never like jab into your, your palette. And so if you can have your paint more on a flat, even surface, then you can pick up your paint more at an angle as opposed to having to like jam it into the palette. So that's why I like to or rather I've decided for my palettes moving forward to once I have the palette in the paint into the palette to smooth it out as much as I can into more of a flat surface. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that for all of the colors that we have. And there you go. Here is a brand new palette. The only thing left to do is to wait for it to dry. So typically when I let my paint dry, I set it out for uh, at least 24 hours, but honestly, I usually let it dry between two and three days. Um, if you use this plastic palette from Blick, it's not airtight so you don't have to worry about um closing it but because this palette the paint is still in liquid form i would keep it open if i were you so set it up on a high shelf or um somewhere where you're not going to accidentally knock it over especially within the first 24 hours as the paint is still in this like liquid paste kind of form but um once you let it dry for a few days the paint is gonna shrink a little bit, so it's not gonna be quite as big inside the palettes as it is now, but then it'll be ready to use. And then the final step will be to swatch all of your colors so that you can have that color scheme in front of you whenever you pull out this palette. So I'm gonna let my palette dry for a few days 
and then I will do the color swatch. One note before I go let this dry first is initially I had Windsor Orange, this light orange included in my lineup, but I decided to take it out mostly because I think that this permanent yellow deep is kind of similar to Windsor Orange and um, also, disclaimer, I forgot it in the lineup as I was filming this video. So uh, instead of Windsor Orange and messing up my rainbow color scheme here, I mean, of all the colors I could have forgotten, this one was not important, which is why I forgot it. Um, but instead of Windsor Orange, I included Daniel Smith Paints Gray um, to add on to Windsor & Newton's Paints Gray, and that's because Daniel Smith Paints Gray is darker than Windsor & Newton Paints Gray. Um, I honestly, Daniel Smith Paints Gray is almost black, um, and so I just thought it would be fun to have both of these two versions of Paints Gray, especially because I know that they're different in my palette, and I use Paints Gray a lot, so it seemed like, uh, an addition that made a lot of sense. So over here, just to sum up before we let this dry, over here we have our reds and pinks and then oranges and yellows and greens uh, and then some blues over here. So this one is turquoise, but then Prussian blue and indigo and then dark blues and purples with violet and perylene violet. And then finally our neutrals with brown, lamp black, burnt umber, lamp black and some white gouache. Um, the white gouache, some of the binder uh, came out in a little liquidy as I poured it in. So if that happens as you're pouring in any of your paint, it's no big deal. You can totally mix the binder back in with the paint and it'll be completely fine. Um, so that's exactly what I did. And now I'm gonna let these guys dry before I use them again. So it's been a few days and my palette is mostly dry. I would probably let it dry since it's it's been about 48 hours and I think I would let it go um, maybe like 24 hours more before I think it's done, but I am ready to swatch it. It's dry enough so that I can swatch out the colors and see where I am and then I'll let it dry some more. So I'm just going to take my paintbrush and get it really wet and dip it in the first well and then just paint a little square of opera pink to see what that looks like and then i'm just going to do that with all of the colors right next to each other And there you go. There is the swatch chart of this palette that will be like an everyday palette that I have to use. Um, sometimes I like to hang swatch charts above my desk or where I can see them so that I can see all of the different colors together when I'm deciding which ones to use. Um, they can just also be fun mementos to have if you, you know, throughout the years for memories as you keep changing your palette order and the colors that you keep in your palettes and um so they can they can be kind of fun so that wraps up this little tutorial on how to prepare a palette and start using it with 20 wells 20 different colors i hope this was helpful for you